He's up against Marco Fu of Hong Kong. I think we know who uh, the supporters here are going to be supporting. Robertson failed to get past the second round of the first two stages of this tournament, but we know what great form he's in. He's looking to win back-to-back -back ranking events, but of course Marco Fu, and our very tough to Master of campaigner. Ceremonies, Michael Edouard. The 14th of July, Bastille Day, le 14 juillet, before, la fête nationale. It all starts. Uprising of the modern French Lance nation. And Leo Scully and the, the referee, the terrific trophy. Of the thunder from down under continues. Neil Robertson, the world number one. And alongside me is the voice of Australian snooker, Robbie Folvari. And what about the bumper crowd in here to support the local hero? Well, it's a packed stadium. This Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Who's got the job to do? Neil Robertson to break. They've all come to see Neil. So it's best of 17 frames, first to nine to become champion. Joe Johnson is alongside me. Obviously, Joe, Neil Robertson is going to start favourite, but Marco Fu, very tough campaigner. Yes, absolutely. And if he gets caught in the safety game, Neil Robertson, Marco Fu is a very, very good safety player. You can never underestimate him. Although Neil Robertson's got a great record in finals. And as you said already, He'll start out favourite, especially in front of his own crowd. In great form, Neil Robertson. Marco Fu, provisionally back in the top 16, so he's going to feel on top of the world. Well, I miss. Tim Neil looks very fast, but not quite that fast. A lot of players have been saying how good the conditions have been. Neil Robertson has had a tough path to the final to beat Mark Selby in the semis. In fact, he turned up here, yes, on home soil, but uh, we had a cold at the start of the week. He said uh, he didn't feel at all well. He would have pulled out of any other tournament, but not this one, of course. But he's pleased he didn't now. Great pots. What a great opening pot from Neil Robertson. Well, he looks uh, like he's fully restored to health. That was a trademark pot, wasn't it, from Robertson? Could have had the right ball replaced. Chance to <laughs> take on that, take on that long red. Played the white in such a position as not to leave anything except the red he was playing on. Nevertheless, great pot. Oh, he didn't play that one well. Yes, you expect him to pot them. Never easy under the cushion, the cue ball. But you do expect him to pot them. A nice, easy opener now for Marco Fu. Yes, Fu as well as uh, had a pretty tough path through to the final. A bit Ken Doherty in the first round. Sean Murphy, good win in the last 16. Dominic Dale and then Robert Milkins, who's been in great form, of course, in the semi-finals. He's only won one ranking title before. That was 2007 Grand Prix. He was runner-up uh, last season in the German Masters. Eight. Nine. Just come a little straight on the black. Would have liked a nice angle to go into them. Bring a few more reds into play. But a bit too straight, so he's going to have to play for that last loose red. <coughs> now he's got to leave Six an three. angle this time. <coughs> the black or the pink. Six. 
seventeen. Choice of both. Well, has he been fortunate? Twenty looking at the red. If it will pass the other reds into the right corner. Looks very tight. He's right behind it and he's not sure. Be a bit easier if you could just play the red in like that. Michael Foote, yes, he wasn't sure, so he decided to play the safety, and it's certainly a good safety. Yes, he's got a great temperament, Foo. Nothing much rattles him. Doesn't betray uh, much outward emotion. Very strong safety game. He was previously coached by Terry Griffiths, now coached by Terry's son, Wayne Griffiths, who's based in Hong Kong. Of course, pretty much the only time for Neil Robertson that he gets to come home now because the circuit obviously is uh, pretty much 12 months of the year. As I say, first two stages of the tournament, best he did was a last 16. So be delighted, will Neil, whatever happens today, to have reached the final, as of course will the audience here. Yes, the pattern's been set for this frame already. Knocked in a great red, Robertson, then missed the easy blue. It could so easily have been end of frame, that. And that would have set a different pattern. Attacking safety shot, opening the reds, coming off them thick. And that's the kind of game I like to see Neil Robertson playing. <coughs> Such an attacking player. And once he does get the balls open, if he gets in, more than likely be end of frame. And so, of course, if Marco Fu gets in, He's put Marco Fu under pressure with that safety shot, that attacking safety shot. Well, he felt he had no choice but to have a go. suppose he could have left something easier. There is a red that will go to the right corner, left middle. But position not guaranteed. I have to play up for the blue. Oh, one of the bark colours. One. And that's a pretty good shot. That was a control shot he played there.
could have done with just coming a, a little Six. further there. He's going to be slightly hampered over the blue at this red into the corner. Taking the more difficult red, and this is missable. I still expected him to get it, though. Showing a few signs of early nerves here. Neil Robertson missed that easy blue. Last time he came to the table. This wasn't too difficult. It was the shot previous, though, when he was on the blue. Should have been easier on the red. Good pot. One. And a good kiss. Yes, I think from Robertson's point of view, it's understandable if there are early nerves. I think uh, once he gets himself involved in the match and kind of forgets where he is, then things might change. But uh, he looked a little edgy early on. Marco Fu, of course, from Hong Kong, although uh, he learned his snooker in Canada Six. when he was a teenager. He was educated in Canada and educated in more ways than one because that's where he learnt match snooker. Seven. And that's okay. He's got a red in bulk. He knows that uh, the vast majority of the audience here is supporting his opponent, but he doesn't care about that. He's got a very good record for against the likes of Ronnie O'Sullivan, John Higgins. 13. It doesn't seem to be about who he's playing. It's always really about him and his performance, and there is a big disparity between his best and his worst. When he plays his best stuff, he's uh, a world beater. When he plays his worst, anyone can beat him. Yes, he doesn't have a great B game, does he? But it's still, when he's on form, when he's seeing them, it's a match for anybody. And that split OK. Chose to go into them rather than play for the loose reds. Ninety. Head-to-head -head between them, it's two each. Fu uh, once beat Robertson at the Masters, 6-5. So uh, that's a high-profile high victory. 27. Takes him 40 points in front. And if loose reds left. It's been a strange frame, this one. Neil Robertson's had two good chances. 43. Applause for the 50 break, the first 50 break of this final. 40. Always nice to see the audience clapping a 50 break. It used to happen quite a lot in the UK. And applause for game ball. Well, 
I'm sure most are supporting Robertson, but this is the only chance all year they have to watch live snooker. So they want to see a good match with some high quality play. I notice in the front row, uh, Dave Jackson, who every year comes to the Crucible, where he also sits in the front row, but he is Australian. And has travelled across country to watch this tournament. Fifty-five. Well, in any match, I guess you just want to settle down as early as you can, and it looks like Fu has done that. Fifty-six. Sixty-three. Can't quite make the century. Thank you. Sixty-four. Now he is a heavy scorer, though. Fu. Last season he made forty-six centuries. That's a lot. In fact, it's one more than Robertson made. Seventy-one. And he wasn't in the top sixteen. Mm. Seventy-three. Says something for him. He's a top 16 player, though, isn't he? Seven Trouble percent. is, there's about 30 <laughs> top 16 players. Well, I think if you polled the other players and said, right, write down the top 16, in your opinion, I think most of them would have him in it. But, of course, it doesn't work like that. I think it's the inconsistency Thank that you. we mentioned. But he's been uh, very consistent this week, and he's made a good start for this final. Robertson had a couple of chances, but it's Marco Fu... He's going to win the opening frame. 85. 91. They call Neil Robertson the thunder from down under, but it's Marco Fu hoping to steal his thunder here today. He's made a good start, 98 clearance. Nothing wrong with that. Marco Fu then leads 1-0, but a long way to go. It's first to nine, he becomes Australian Open champion here in Bendigo.